Hello world, I'm Don, and in today's video I'm going to process a blue hour landscape image in Photolab 6 and then in Nick Collection. So interestingly, that image was actually the very last one I shot of the day and not at all the image that I went there to capture. I went to capture a fuller image of the dock and that, I mean, you know, I got some images of the dock, but it didn't quite work out the way I hoped because it was really banking on the sky lighting up and the sky never did light up. There was, according to my ever trustworthy app that tells me about sunrise and sunset, there was a, a decent chance of a nice sunset and uh, I gave it a crack, but you know, it's like that. I, I had a lovely time standing there thinking about things while I waited for the sun to set but it never really did light up too, too brightly. So I looked around, I took a few other shots, and, and like I said, this was the last one I took, really pleased with it. The editing, reasonably straightforward. I think there's, there's something in there of interest for everyone, no doubt. There's a little bit of local. There's uh, use of the HSL uh, item to add a bit of extra oomph to those posts in the foreground, just to make them stand out just a little bit more. Um, yeah, so. Give it a watch. Uh, I eventually take it into the new Nick collection, and this is in no way uh, a walkthrough of the new Nick collection, but I do take a moment to look at a few bits and pieces around one of the big things in the new Nick collection is that the control lines have made their way across there. Um, and also there's a, an interesting setting, not for control lines, but for control points called diffusion that I really hope will eventually make its way into Photolab. So I just give a wee little demonstration of that along the way as well. So. And here is the completed image that's been through Photolab and also been through a little, a few tweaks in uh, Nick Collection. This is what the RAW looked like when I sent it to Nick Collection and this is a reset virtual copy of what the image looked like out of camera. So a little bit dark, obviously needs to lift up a lot of the detail through this area down here. The colors are quite muted and whatnot, but there's a lot in there. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. So if I start with this one, I'm going to start on my light tab and I'll just start right up at the top here, go exposure compensation. I often like to see what it does if I just put it on center weighted. And in fact, that does just kind of pick things up a little bit for me. So that's a fine start. And from there, I'll put on smart lighting. I almost always, I mean, unless I think that the exposure is awfully close, I almost always do exposure compensation first and then smart lighting. Because smart lighting, in my opinion, on its own, if it's trying to do all the heavy lifting and there's fair, a fair bit to be done, it can sometimes make it not look as nice, in my opinion. So my habit has always been to try and get the exposure as close as possible with exposure compensation and then to add smart lighting. I'm going to add a little bit of selective tone, especially just a touch in the shadows, maybe about like, yeah, about 13. That sounds like a fine number. Um, and maybe just a hair more in the midtones, just to pick that up overall a little bit. And now I'm going to add some contrast and that will have the effect of, of dropping some tones again. We'll see, you know, as it spreads things out, obviously it'll also lift some as well, but parts of the image will become darker again. So let's just crank this up maybe ish. That is looking good. Put on the old micro contrast. I think I'm gonna swap that out for fine contrast since I have it available. I th overall, I tend to like the uh, effect of fine contrast a little bit more. So that will do nicely. And nothing on tone curve for now, so that's fine for the light tab. Just going to flick over here to the color space. I'm going to leave it in wide gamut as I pretty much always do. Raw white balance. So this was a, sort of a blue hour shot, and I can't remember what I think possibly I had my camera on. Um, what do I want to say? On shade. That's what I'm after. But I think it needs to go a little bit further than that. So I'm actually going to um, bring this up closer to ten thousand ish. Um, 10,100, yeah, just to give it a little, give it a little something. I'm going to put on, so if you don't touch this, it gives a very generalized rendering. 
um, the same one. It gives basically this neutral color rendering if you don't touch this, but I'm going to flick this on and, and this is chosen, so it'll, it'll make that little bit of a shift. Choosing that in this instance, again, because it just it adds a little bit of extra contrast rather than the general one. And it also sometimes changes the colors, though not too much in this, um, in this instance. Great, so coming on down, I'm going to do one thing in HSL. Um, I'm going to flick that on, I'm going to work in my reds. I'm going to grab this red picker. I'm going to come in here after, kind of that's a little bit narrow. Let me just one-to-one um, -one this for a moment so I can see where I'm picking a bit more. There, there, it's just going to give me a narrow one. It's funny how, you know, different uh, on different occasions you get slightly different results. I'm just going to extend that out a little bit both ways. And essentially what I'm going to do on this, I would just want to bring out a little bit of the, the orangish color in these posts. So I'm going to um, bump the saturation a bit, and that's looking a little oversaturated right now, but I'm also about to bump the luminance, and that will um, have the effect of, of lightening it, which will take some of the saturation out of it. Um, and let me just, it's a small shift, but I, I feel like that's taking it a little more to the orange side if I take uniformity down that way. If I take uniformity in the other direction, it seems like it's shifting it a little bit more to the red side, so I will leave it there. So a small difference, but it does that look like there's like a little kiss of light hitting that now, doesn't there? Makes it makes a bit of a difference to, to my eye. So that is all good. Now, before I go any further, I know I want to just put on a couple of local adjustments. So I'll just zoom back out and do that. Click into local adjustments. And I'm going to just use a, a graduated filter here on the bottom. I'm going to drag that up. And I'm going to... Add a little bit of micro contrast down here below, just again to punch the contrast in the closer part of the image. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast here as well, which I think I'm going to um, then just also brighten it a hair. So I find the contrast again does darken things down a touch. So I'll go somewhere around there. That's probably looking good. Then I also want to put one on the sky. And when I did my when I did my sample here, I just used a graduated filter there as well. I know technically, you know, that means it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit my hills um, and impact them a little bit, but oh, just, you know what, I'm not too worried. I'm not making a huge adjustment, so let's just see. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it both ways and see, see what we reckon. Um, take that down. Yeah, about half a stop is good for now. Um, and then I'm going to also just add just a smidge of micro contrast. Uh, micro contrast, of course, does that to your skies. Which, you know, if you're not careful, it can go way too far. But I, I find a little bit does just add a little bit of nice definition and, and, um, and contrast in the clouds. Provided I don't want a really soft, soft look. I'll often put just a hair of this. bit hard deciding where my hair is going to be, but we'll call that good enough. Um, and I might just, might just up the saturation on the touch. And, or in the sky, might do just a hair good. Excellent. Nice. So that is my color. I've done my reds. I've done all that. Okay. Detail tab just to pop in here. I'm actually not doing anything. I've not looked that closely, to be honest, whether I don't tend to be a big stickler for noise. Um, not too worried. Sorry, I was closing some things down. Pop that down. What was it? So I was shot on ISO 100, so it's probably pretty darn clean anyway. Up there again. Um, I don't think I'm going to stress. Let's see. It'll little hints and noise, but it's pretty, pretty good. I don't think I'll be bothered with any, any noise reduction in this instance. And I'll just stick with the lens sharpness, chromatic aberrations. Ah, I just remembered I do want to, it's just a small thing. Let me bring that back to view. I find that's just off a little. And I know from my other version that I did that the automatic horizon tool actually didn't quite hit it. Um, so I'll just do it manually. Gone the wrong way, haven't I? Must have been minus 20. Bear with, bear with. Nearly there. Just doing it by eye, just so that it doesn't annoy me. Um, I'll put on the crop. Not all based on keystoning, so it's done its thing. Excellent. And so that's everything. So I'm just, just out of curiosity. I just want to see um, how the two compare. I always like to do this when I, you know, because when you process even the same raw image multiple times, I find I almost always have slight differences. So this is the one I've just done. This is the one I did before. Oh, interesting. So it's a little bit, a uh, little bit more sort of bluey, purpley tones in it. Nice. Oh, that's quite cool. 
I, I quite like the bluey purpley. Just bear with me for a moment while I see what I did to make that bluey purpley color, because I can't honestly recall. Um, so I have my contrast the same. That's all looking good over here on about 10,000. So I hit that about the same. Oh, I added a little tint to it. Okay. Okay. There we go. That might be doing something. Anything else? No, that's all looking pretty good. So let me, let me try that tint. I'll also check the locals if the tint doesn't do it, but, um, let me pop back here and add, oh, I see it's got a little bit. So this is, this is a touch up cause it was 10,300. I did in the end and I added a little tint. Yeah. We'll go there side by side them now. Let's see what we got. Oh, still a little bit. I bet you it must be in the locals, depending on what I did with the color shift in the locals. Let me come over here. So interesting. That's why, you know, it's, I, I, I'm endlessly fascinated um, by this process and by our perceptions of color, our perceptions of reality. Because um, in my mind, I was editing this to be just the same, but obviously I took some slightly different turns. So I increase saturation, and this is on 93. So that's the, that's the older one and the newer one that I'm just processing now. Ah, I went in the other direction with my, um, that's exactly what I did. Let's see, didn't I? So I put, yeah, so rather than bringing it down, I brought it up. Interesting. Well, I think I like the down a bit more, so I'm going to bring that down. Um, but -um, but -um. Yeah, right about there. Lovely. That'll do. Awesome. So that's everything for the DXO processing. Now I just need to, um, after I had done this edit with Nick, I went back in, and in order to go back in and still get at the same settings that you've been dealing with, of course, you need to make a change in here. So I just need to make that change first, which is because now I want to send a raw file. When I was sending the TIFF for re-editing, you have to choose export selected without processing, but now I want to do a raw file, so I need to change that. So I'm going to go export as a TIFF, 16-bit. That's all good. Adobe color space, so that's all good. Okay. Now you will have to bear with me because Nick does not remember the size that you've had it at. So when I do this, it's going to come, um, we'll do unique names. <coughs> so it's going to come really large and I'll just have to resize it. So bear with me. I'll jump forward. And I'm back after <laughs> several, uh, 30 to seconds to a minute of trying to get the thing resized into my little recording window. Um, I'm not using my full screen because if I use my full screen, then all of the interface gets quite small on the video. And I reckon it's reasonably hard for you guys to see. Um, if by any off chance, anyone from DxO ever happens to watch this video, a uh, current bug with the new Nick collection being that this part of the window down here with the cancel and apply button, every time it opens, it pushes that below where you can see. So you have to resize the window to even be able to see it. Don't know if that's on everybody's system, but it certainly happens consistently with mine. Um, so a little bug report there. Um, anyway, I digress. Here we go. So in terms of processing this, uh, I'll, I'll show it basically really simple processing, um, but then I'm going to do a couple of tweaks to it. And those couple of tweaks can show you something about the new Nick collection and the way that they've um, done their control points and control lines in here. So bear with me. I am after presets. That's what I'm after. And just, I don't use the presets often, to be honest, because I, I often don't feel like they um, work that well, but I really quite enjoy this one. So I'm going to just make a, a few tweaks to it, however. So just, you know, if we look at what it's dumped on there. So right now, always here are Clearview, Grain, and, and HSL um, sat there. So that's great. And then this is what it's added in. So old photo, to show you what that's doing. It's kind of toning it mostly, isn't it? It's not changing too much else. Um, so that's great. I'll that one up, cross-processing. Yeah, so that's kind of, that's off, that's on. It's kind of impacting, um, impacting the uh, contrast quite a bit. So I'm going to actually, I'll, I'll, I'll do, do it here as well. And in two places, I'm going to add. So um, let me see. So these are the main controls. And then we've got protect your shadows and highlights. Um, and then we've got control points and control lines and that sort of thing. So you've got positive and they're calling it a neutral or a remove here. Um, and then the control line and a neutral or remove control line here. And 
Well, actually, you know, it comes to comes to my mind that I might not need. I might put it on anyway, but I might not need it. Actually, it might be just simpler to do that because what I found was that that those highlights on this side were getting just a just a touch hot. But then that's affecting the old image, the whole image. So maybe I will use this. Um, so basically, so I've got my what do we call it? An effect, a filter on here, and I want to remove it from this spot. So I'm going to put a neutral control point on here to just help to deal to it in that spot. Um, and I don't tend to use these because I find them hard to get a hold of, but we do have them reflected over here as well, luminance, chrominance, and diffusion, which is, is interesting. And I'm guessing slash hoping that this is something they're going to add to Photolab. Historically, I feel like I've noticed that, that something like this won't be rolled out until Photolab 7, unfortunately. You can always cross our fingers, but I, I, I'm not too hopeful for that. Um, so if I click here, I just click this little doodad. Uh, it's going to show me the mask. I just want to show you this diffusion. It's, it's, it's a, essentially, it's affecting the, the feather in things. So there, it's a nice, soft ease out. Um, but if I wanted to bring it in more, if I wanted to not have it go out as much, I can do, you know, and, and all the way down to, uh, you know, quite a, quite a hard edge. So that's quite neat. I, I, I like the fact that it's, I think that's one of the strengths of this technology is the fact that it blends in well with other stuff around it. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller, though, to take it out of the sky a touch. Uh, oh, no, actually, I think I will keep it there, because I want the sky to do a similar thing. So, yeah, that's all good. I will cut back off again. And I don't think I need to adjust it, because I think it's doing exactly what I hoped for. So if I just show before and after of what the neutral control point is doing, it's just... And, you know, if I wanted to, um, if I wanted to let a bit of that through, I can use the opacity there. So and basically, when... The opacity is all the way up, then all of the effect is coming through. And if the opacity is all the way down, come on, that's why I don't use these. I find them real hard to get hold of. Um, if the opacity is all the way down, then none of the effect. And so you can put it part way through, but in, in this instance, I actually do want it all removed. So I'm just going to leave it uh, all the way there. So that was cross processing. I'll just make this smaller so it goes away. Levels and curves. Cool. Little tweak there. What's it doing? Oh, there's a little curve on red. Doesn't look like there's anything on green, little curve on blue, and nothing on luminance. So that's all good. Happy enough with that. I'll make that smaller. Um, and then sunlight. And interestingly, so sunlight, if I click it, you can see that's doing actually a lot, isn't it? Um, and I, I basically like it, but I think I noticed that they've actually done it with zero light strength, but they're just impacting. There's the, the temperature is, is set, um, brightness is on zero, but contrast is cranked which is, is really interesting. And then they've, they've downed the opacity a little bit. Um, so I like this well enough, but I think that I do actually want a bit of light strength. I don't want it to be um, too dark because I find that, I mean, I don't mind it here too much, but I find that the hills were getting sort of extra, extra. So if I look at that now, the hills aren't being impacted too much, um, but it is still adding some contrast down a touch, but not too much. There go. And once again, that, because it's so much contrast, is hitting on this spot. Um, which is making it just, I wouldn't mind it, but for the fact that it's on the edge of the frame, it sort of draws the eye in a in a weird way. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a control point there and do that. Might even take it all up to there. Let me just see now. But, um, yeah, yeah, that'll do. Um, nice, cool. Okay, so that's good for that. And then I thought I would just show uh, quickly a control line. And so that's all of the all of the um, preset that I've applied, those, those were all the bits that were part of the preset. So, but I just want to add, I'll, I'll add one more effect. So I'll just come back here to filters and I'll just add a um, graduated, whoa, sorry for the scrolly scrolly, graduated neutral density. And I'm going to press the plus to add that in. And it's lovely, but again, it's making those hills quite dark. So I just thought, hey, why not, uh, why not use that as a, um, as a control point scenario. So I'll just grab that, or not a control point, control line scenario. Grab that and pop that there. Oh my, yeah, my eyedropper is incredibly hard to get hold of. So basically, I want it to be affecting this. I don't want it to be affecting the hills. So that, straighten this out a little bit of one of those shifts to um, help out. Keys wouldn't hurt, but you know, we'll work with what we have. Let me just um, do a before and after control line. Yeah, it looks like it's not really hitting the hills too much at all. 
just hitting that sky and that's lovely so the control lines work really nicely i noticed they do not have they've only got luminance and chrominance um wonder just out of curiosity how's that yeah, it's not super tight on there is it i might just obviously there's a big difference in luminance there so i might just take those hills out of it even more just up that it doesn't take much a few points and they seem to be all out of it Let me back that off a touch there yeah, that's probably a really nice balance um I'm not too worried if a little bit of that leaks onto this water here. In fact, that might actually be nice. I just really wanted to save those hills. So let me uh, turn that off and let me grab this because I decided that I will bring it down for that water. If it wants to ease onto that water, that's just fine. Nice. Thinking for a moment. Yeah, I think that's everything. So here we go. Apply. So this will be, yeah, so this will be the one that I just did. I can tell because over here on the name, it now says Nick-1. And this one just says Nick, because this is the used unique name. So that's the one I just did. That's the one I did before. Pretty consistent. I think that's not bad for that kind of process. So with that, I will wrap up. Cue the outro. So what did you think? I had a lot of fun processing that image. Uh, I, I, I have to say it's a little bit more... Um, contrasty than I would often take images. I tend, I've noticed in myself over time that I tend towards lighter contrast, but I've also noticed a trend more recently of, of pushing that just a little bit further. Um, just trying to do it carefully so that it doesn't kind of go too intense on me, but, uh, but I'm quite pleased with how that came out. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. You reckon it was a, a good edit? Is there anything you would change about that edit uh, or do differently? With that, I will sign off and say thanks so much for watching and check back soon for new videos. Bye for now.